If you're new to OpenSense, one area that might be a bit confusing or challenging at first is understanding how firewall rules work. I know it took me a little bit of time to wrap my mind around it because I was new to it. In this video, I'm gonna focus on the rule order and how rules are processed in OpenSense to help clear up any confusion you may have before we start creating the actual rules themselves. In a future video, I'll explore creating the actual firewall rules in more detail, but in this one, I wanna focus on just the rule order and how things are processed in OpenSense because I think it's important to understand that before you know you start writing the rules so then you know, you know where to create rules and, and, and when you might want to create rules in different areas. So I've selected one of my VLAN interfaces in the firewall rules section to demonstrate the order that rules are processed in in OpenSense. As you can see, I have two basic firewall rules on this interface that allows internet only access for this network so OpenSense a few versions ago updated their interface to better show how the order of the firewall rules are executed, which I like a lot because it's easier to visualize what's happening before these rules get executed. As you can see, there are automatically generated rules, which this was here a while ago, but they've added the floating rules and the group rules. Starting with the automatically generated rules, you'll see these are all the rules that OpenSense creates you know, automatically for you for every network. And these are rules you can't really change and it's based on some of the configuration options that you select. Like if you're using IPv6, it's going to enable some of these IPv6 rules that are required for the network to function properly. So these rules you generally don't uh, aren't concerned about with too much because you, you kind of really need most of those really to have a properly functioning network. And then comes the floating rules. Floating rules occur before any other rules that you have on your network. So you can, you can define these under the rule section. There's a floating rules category that you can create uh, these rules. And you can see I have a few in here. And these are actually good for when you want to block like network wide, you know, block lists and that sort of thing you can add in there in the floating rule section. So then next is group rules, which you'll see I have some group rules here to redirect DNS and NTP to my local DNS and NTP uh, service. Uh, these rules apply uh, at the, you know, after the floating rules, but before the rules for your interface. And firewall groups allow you to group multiple rules together that you wanna apply across multiple interfaces so you don't have to repeat yourself. If you wanna change that access later, it's nice to be able to do it in one place. So you'll see that you got automatic rules and then the floating rules and then the group rules, which only apply to specific interfaces in that group that you've selected. And then finally, it'll do the interface rules like this interface here that's called security. I actually, these rules get applied last. Now within each, each section, the rules are processed in the order from the top to the bottom. Whenever traffic matches that rule, the network traffic for that rule will be either allowed or denied based on what you have in that rule. Once it hits this rule, it won't process any other rules, right? So if this rule allows access to here, it doesn't go ahead and execute the rule below it. It just stops right there and then it'll process the next packet. And you can override this behavior, as you can see, um, by default, it's first match. So when you go to edit this rule, I'm gonna go to edit real quick. You can change this to be apply the action immediately on match. You can uncheck this so that it'll go to the next rule and process it. But most of the time you want to have it apply on the first rule that matches because otherwise you might get into some strange scenarios. It'd be hard to troubleshoot and figure out what's being allowed or blocked because it's passing through certain rules. And um, you, it's better just to do it the first rule wins. It's a little bit easier to understand, I think. There might be some scenarios where this apply action immediately on match. If you disable it, it might be useful. I haven't actually found a case in my network to be able to, to use that effectively. And to me, it, it, it just makes it seem like it'd be a little more confusing to, kind of, to understand like, okay, uh, you know, if certain rules are skipped. But that is an option to change the default behavior of the rules if you need to. But, but I recommend just leaving it at the default where it's always checked. So the first rule that matches the traffic on your network wins. So that way you know it's gonna be immediately allowed or immediately denied. So I hope this helps you understand how the rule order works in OpenSense. And so when you go to create rules, which I'll go into more detail later, that you'll understand uh, when rules are fired and what order they're in. Because once we start getting into the details on how to actually implement rules, you're, you're gonna, that's gonna become very important because you want to make sure you want your rules in the proper order. Because if you have them out of order, you're gonna either allow or deny things that you don't want. And so in general, I would recommend doing more specific rules you know, 
first to the more broader rules at the bottom because that's going to be your allow all or deny all type thing. And one thing to note that I didn't mention yet is if you didn't have any rules on this interface, it basically it, it defaults to deny all. So in open sense, it, if you don't have any rules in there, it, you're basically creating an isolated network that cannot communicate to the internet or any other network on your network. So that actually can be useful if you say have an IP camera network and you don't want it to access the internet. So that's one example where you might want to like have minimal amount of firewall rules or nothing because you can take advantage of that deny all. So I hope this helps you get a better understanding of how the rules are or processed and what order they're processed in. So when you go to create your firewall rules, you'll be ready to go knowing that the order of the rules are important and knowing that it starts with the automatic rules and the floating rules and then group rules and then the interface rules. So it goes from the top bottom and then whichever rules match first is the one that's gonna win, uh, whether it's allowing or denying the traffic. So um, until next time, I hope you have a good day.